got, is it Greg in Tucson? Uh, yes, hi. I have a question about a, a Bible verse. Um, my entire family is Christian, but it never took with me. I never, uh, you know, thinking back, I never considered myself a Christian. About 20 years ago, I started believing in God. I, again, I didn't think of myself a, as a Christian. I, I have always had a problem with organized religion. So about five years ago, I started studying the Bible, and I tried to do it with an open mind. And this is the passage that, that just stopped me in my tracks. It's um, Exodus 21, verses uh, 20 and 21. If uh, a man strikes slaves? his male or female slave with a rod, and he dies at his hand, he shall be punished. If, however, he survives a day or two, no vengeance shall be taken, for he is his property. Yep. It was my very first real realization that God is saying right here that it is okay to have slaves. Oh, I mean, it says a lot more than that. It, yeah, it does. But that was the first thing I thought. It, you know, I'd heard them talk about slaves in the Bible, but here God is condoning, actually condoning slavery and saying it's okay to, for you know, a human being that he supposedly created to be owned by another human being. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the real obvious one is God has seems to think that, you know, like if I hit somebody over the head with a blunt object and they die right away or they die next week, you know, I'm responsible for that person's death, right? Yep. I mean, everybody knows that. Today... Everybody except for the guy who wrote that verse. Right, exactly. Um, Which luckily wasn't a god. Yeah. Well, that's because let me tell you we too, would be quick. we would be really screwed if there were in fact a god and he wrote that. Yeah. That would be pretty horrifying. Exactly. You know what's weird? I'm going to sidetrack myself a little bit. I, in my being, I'm usually not naive. But I naively thought, when I read this, that, oh my God, even any Christian who reads these words would have to admit that God couldn't possibly have written these words. And I called, uh, like, a, I have a one friend who's totally a, a fundamentalist, uh, George Bush-loving Christian. <laughs> and amazingly, we get along very well on everything else. And I read this to him, and he would not believe the way he rationalized. Oh, well, yes, I would. <laughs> I've had this particular passage rationalized at least five times in the past month by people it, in email. It's amazing. Yeah. What's funny then, is that uh, most, of, most of what they end up doing when they rationalize, all you have to do is go grab another verse to show that, that, that they're wrong. He said, well, first, they treated slaves very differently in those days. Yes, they beat them with rods. Yeah, <laughs> until they died. <laughs> That's what I said. Yeah. I, I, it, it's the dumbest thing in the world. I, you're, you're experiencing exactly what I've experienced. I point out a passage that says you can beat your slaves as long as they don't die within a day or two. And by the way, uh, why a day or two? Can we be a little bit more specific? I mean, if you're going to put a timeline on it, yeah. if they don't die after a day, but they die on the second day, can you just say, well, it wasn't a day? Yeah. He can suffer, <laughs> you know, severe brain injuries. He can lose an eye or a limb. Well, except you'd have to right? lose an eye, too. What? You'd have to lose an eye, too. If it's a slave? Oh, yeah. Okay. The thing is, so, so basically what it encourages is beating that. somebody to death in a way that takes a while yeah. that doesn't do damage that would have to be done to you. But yeah, that's the first thing is, oh, no, no, you guys, you're so naive. You, you've bought into this myth. You simply don't understand that slavery was so much different back then. You have this, I, this concept of slavery from, the, you know, the nasty things that happened in the South and exactly. you know, from watching Roots and everything. No, you moronic asshole. <laughs> Not only does the book talk about hitting them with a rod and letting them, and they, you're not in trouble if, they t if it takes them more than two days to die. The point here, you thick dimwit, is that it advocates owning another person as property. Right. That's wrong. I don't care if you treat them like a frickin' angel, like they're the best thing that's ever happened to you. They're not property. To say that you get to own another person and pass them down to, to your children as property is simply freaking wrong. Done. That's exactly. it. 
Like how many goats and how many slaves do you it, have? It's also very common for Christians to try to get out of this by pulling the, oh, it's the Old Testament trick, mm. right? God could only really motivate. He was, he was trying to make slavery less bad by putting in that rule. Because, but that's really as far as he could go back then. Yeah, find the part in the New Testament where it explicitly says slavery is wrong, there's no such thing as owning another human being. Try to find it. It doesn't exist. Do they talk about slavery in the New Testament? Yeah, it says servants obey your masters. Oh yeah, yeah. There's one bit they like to bring up, uh, and I'm sure Matt will know chapter and verse. I'm I not a Bible expert um, about the some slave that is personally known to the writer of the of that New Testament book, and he's asking for that guy to be set free. But it's because it, he's because he's a you know a good Christian man or something. Mm -hmm. But that, that, that is not an anti-slavery statement. It's a, hey, let my personal friend off the hook because he's one of us statement. Huh. That's it. Um, I thought, well, here are the Jews. Uh, they had just been... This, this, I believe this passage is when God is giving the Jews the laws right after the Ten Commandments, right? Yeah. Um, and God had allegedly freed them as slaves in Egypt, right? Yeah. So my question is, how long had they been free at this point? How long since they'd been freed from slavery to this moment in the Bible? Uh, I, I couldn't say off the top of my head. I, if, I, if I'm remembering right, I mean, this is essentially not an entire generation has even passed at this point. But right. I, I might be wrong. It could have been several generations, depending on the verse. Well, that I find very odd, too, that... You know, having just been freed as slaves, they're already talking about owning their own slaves. Well, well I mean, it, it, the, the, the God chooses the Jews to free, right? Right. It, he doesn't say universally across the world, all slaves are now free. He chooses right. some guys. So having been chose, they're the free ones. There's no statement there that slavery is is inherently evil just oh you guys get to not be slaves anymore they, they get very specific in the sense that there are specific rules applied to the jews on who they can enslave for example anybody who's not a jew that's the first rule and right. then there's the second rule that says oh and by the way you can enslave your fellow jews but you have to let them go in the seventh year <laughs> and then as if that wasn't funny enough right after that there's a little verse that says but if you give him a wife when his seven years are up and he's ready to go, his wife stays with you. And then if he comes to you and says, oh, I love my wife and I love my master and I don't want to leave, then you get to drive a spike through his ear and he's now your property forever. So oh, after true. saying you can enslave Jews but not forever, it then gives you the loophole that allows you to enslave your fellow Jews forever. <laughs> Brilliant. I remember reading that now. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the odd thing to me is that having been slaves themselves, yeah. You would think they would be more opposed to slavery. Slavery isn't um, the equivalent of perpetual torture. Um, it, it's a matter, uh, even in the South, and you watch whatever else, and, and yes, we're talking about beating people. That's why my huge objection is this idea of owning this property. It's absolutely stupid of a slave owner to continually beat and torture his slaves, because guess what? They're not going to be very productive. You're going to yeah. have injured people rather than actual workers. So by and large, um, slavery can be beneficial to the slaves as well. I mean, you're in, it's not, it, it, I'm, not, I'm not trying to play this up as a plus, but you're in a situation where you have uh, regular work and food and everything else and you're taken care of and you're part of a system and you're being productive. The problem here is not that everything about everything that happens within this is necessarily evil. It's that you are not free. You are owned. Your decisions are not your own. You are property. And the, the reason that it wasn't surprised, it wasn't, uh, that it shouldn't surprise anybody that they wanted to have slaves as well is because if you have, have owning slaves, fantastic for the slave owner. <laughs> it's yeah, it's like the best things before sliced bread. <laughs>